What's up everyone? Back today with our third comparison series, Google versus Apple. And today we're coming back to you with the calendar comparison. If you like these comparisons at all, shoot me a note. What do you want to see next? Now, if you're anything like me at all, then you love to use your calendar to keep your life organized. Ever since I got married and now we have a one-year-old, we live and breathe by our calendar. And because of this, I've tried a whole bunch of different calendar apps over the years and I've narrowed it down to the big two. Again, Google Calendar versus Apple Calendar. And today we're gonna to do something very similar. We're gonna be comparing these in the same five categories as the last couple of videos, and that's appearance, usability, integration, features, and privacy. Now, one thing that I do have to mention for this one is that I'm actually using the new Apple Calendar app that was released in iOS 18 beta, which will be released to the public in the fall along with the new iPhones and the new iOS 18. And I also have to mention that literally the only reason I'm doing this video is because of that updated iOS 18 calendar. Prior to that, the Apple Calendar app just was honestly totally useless to me. And we'll go into that a little bit more later. But thankfully it's been updated. So now there's a lot to look at here. So let's get started. So the first category is appearance. And we'll be starting with Google Calendar. Now the first thing that you'll notice when you open up Google Calendar is very bright saturated colors to identify your different calendars. There are a few different ways that you can view your calendar from the standard month view to a list view that shows all your different tasks. You have the days view, you have a three day view, you have a week view, and in all these options you can actually pinch to zoom to change the size of it to zoom into different areas or show the whole day. But that's pretty much it. This is a very simple calendar app but it does look pretty good. So now onto Apple Calendar. And if you had asked me just a month ago before WWDC 2024 about the Apple Calendar, I would have told you that it got a negative point. For this. I can't believe anyone at Apple actually thought that it was a good idea to when you're looking at the month view to just have a dot on a day that you have an event. You could have one single event that only takes 15 minutes, or you could have an entire day packed with things and you will not have an, any idea when you just look at the month view. I've talked about this in other videos, but this just completely blew my mind when I switched over from Android to Apple and was playing around with this app for the first time. I just couldn't understand. But thankfully in iOS 18, they finally fixed this. So in the month view now, you have the ability to actually see your events listed out. And you can pinch to zoom to show different sizes, different levels, different amounts of events on the month view calendar, which is great and even better than Google's functionality when looking at the month view. All the different calendars have different colors, just like Google, but these are more kind of pastel, faded colors rather than those bright, saturated colors that Google went with. There are different view options to see your actual events, which you have the single day, the multi-day, or the week view as well, similar to Google. So overall, the appearance is actually pretty similar with both of these apps, especially now that you can see the events on both month view calendars. But because of the flexibility of Apple Calendar, I'm actually surprisingly going to give Apple Calendar the point here. Again, which kind of blows my mind because just a month ago, this was completely out of the question. So if you're still waiting for the new version of this calendar app for iOS 18, hang in there. I promise it's going to be worth it. Okay, onto the second category, usability, and we'll be starting with Google Calendar. So again, there's not a lot of fluff here in this app. You have the ability to change the views by clicking on the little hamburger icon at the top left. This is the same sidebar that you'll be able to either turn on or off your various calendars. And there's a settings menu where you can change some very basic settings. When looking at the main calendar, in the bottom right, you have a plus that you can click on and add various events or tasks, depending on what you're trying to add. At the top right of the UI, you have a button to get back to today's view. You have a search bar and you have a button to manage your Google account. And this layout and functionality is pretty much identical across all the different devices, whether that be your smartphone, your tablet, whether it be Apple or Android, they all pretty much look and feel exactly the same. The only downside here is when you're using it on a PC or a Mac, any sort of computer really, there is no app available and you have to use this in the browser, just like one of the negative sides with Gmail. And because you need to access it through the browser, it's a bit of a downside. It takes a couple extra steps to get it open. But once it's open, you have, again, similar functionality. Now, one thing that I really, truly love about Google Calendar is actually the widget that they've created for the iPhone and the iPad. And that's because in one single widget, you have both 
the month view so you can see what day of the week it is and it has your current day's event calendar along with any other upcoming events in the future days. So in just one small little widget, you have a ton of functionality and I loved that. But with all that said, now onto Apple Calendar. Now this one's organized quite a bit differently and you have the ability to actually swipe left on the phone to bring up the annual or the yearly view, which I don't think that you can actually do at least on an iPhone within Google Calendar. I know you can do it on the computer, but I don't think that you can actually do it on your iPhone. So this is a cool functionality. Then at the bottom of the screen, you have different buttons. You have a button to take you to today's events, to manage your calendars, or to respond to any open invitations that you might have for upcoming events. At the top, you have a button to change the layout. You have a search bar. And this is where you have your plus to add different events or reminders. One thing that I do really like about Apple Calendar is this functionality and the appearance and everything about it is pretty much identical across the board no matter what device you're using, whether it's your iPhone, your iPad, or your Mac. And even if you have a PC, you can still actually access your Apple Calendar via iCloud.com. For Apple Calendar, there are many widgets available. However, there isn't anything that matches the Google Calendar widget that I had mentioned. There's separate widgets, one with the, the month view and one with your day's events, but they don't have a combined one, which, like I said, I really love. So another category that's pretty close across both apps here, but I'm actually going to give this one to Apple Calendar as well for their consistency across all different devices. I shouldn't have to actually open up Safari, go to a website, and then go into Google Calendar. Sure, I can create a web app and put that in the dock, but I shouldn't have to do that. It should just be standard functionality. Now on to category number three, and that's going to be integration. Now this is both a tough and a simple one for both of these apps because if you're on Android, Google wins this hands down. Google Calendar connects with Google Meet and Google Keep. And if you're on Apple, then Apple Calendar wins this because it connects with FaceTime and Apple Reminders for almost exactly the same functionality. I can't pick a winner here. I just have to give a point for both here. So this brings Apple Calendar to three points and Google Calendar to one point. So on to category number four, and that's going to be features. Again, starting with Google Calendar. Now this is another bit of a tough category because, well, these apps primarily function as, well, a calendar. They don't have a ton of extra fluff in either of these apps. But there are a few things worth mentioning here. Specifically for Google, most of everything that I'm about to mention here is only available on the web version. So if you're strictly using it on your phone or on a tablet, you're not going to have access to these features. The first one is going to be the ability to actually set up availability and a scheduling appointment calendar for professional services. Similarly, you have the ability to actually link it to a ton of different third-party apps out there. A couple different examples are Zapier or Zapier, Trello, and Todoist. There's a ton more out there. It's almost limitless. So if you need some sort of integration, Google Calendar is going to be your best bet. Now onto Apple Calendar. An Apple Calendar doesn't really have anything that compares with either of these features from Google, but what it does have is something that's kind of cool called the travel time. So when you're creating an event within Apple Calendar, you can add the travel time from your location to the location of the event, and that's going to be calculated through Apple Maps. And then what you can do is actually set the notification for your event based on the travel time, not based on the time of the event. So Google does something very similar where as the time of an event is approaching, it's going to tell you or warn you, hey, make sure you leave by this time to get there to that event. But to my knowledge, you can't actually customize a notification to show up, for instance, an hour before you need to leave. That's where the travel time functionality comes in handy on Apple Calendar. But other than that, there's really nothing special here about the Apple Calendar app. It's pretty basic, but it looks a lot better than it used to. However, I still have to give this point to Google because it does have all that integration and different abilities to do more of a professional service like scheduling appointments. So Google gets the point. We're up to two points for Google, three points for Apple, and we're on to our last category. That's going to be category number five, and we're going to be talking privacy and or security. So after digging into both of these apps quite a bit, there isn't really anything specific to the apps themselves as it relates to security and privacy. 
both of these, both Google Calendar and Apple Calendar, pretty much just rely on the philosophies of their parent companies, Google and Apple, for the different security features that are associated with the app. Now, Google is pretty much notorious for selling any amount of data that they can possibly get their hands on, and that's how they make their money. Whereas Apple has seemed to stay true to their belief of security and privacy is key, and they're trying to keep everything end-to-end -end encrypted. However, because none of this is really associated with the apps themselves, I'd feel a little bit iffy giving a point to either app here. So I'm just going to say this one's a tie, award no points for this category, and that means that our winner for the best calendar app is going to be Apple Calendar with the score of 3, and that beats out Google Calendar that had a score of 2. However, as I mentioned before, this is only the case if you're using the new Apple Calendar app that's released with iOS 18 beta. If you're still using the old Apple Calendar app, sure you have some of the functionality and the features that we talked about, but just the sheer fact that you can't look at your events on a monthly view, maybe I'm the only one that that's like hugely important, but I just can't get past the fact that the old Apple Calendar app was so useless because I couldn't see anything. So let me know what you think about the new calendar app versus the old calendar app, and let me know which you prefer to use. Prior to this update, I was exclusively using Google Calendar, even though I only use Apple devices for everything. However, since the update, I've switched over, haven't touched Google Calendar since, and I don't plan to anytime soon. So like I said before, let me know what other apps you want to see compared in this series, and we'll keep it going. But for now, check out one of these videos for either the maps comparison or the email comparison, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.